Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to wish you all a very, very happy Sabbath. To God be the glory, great things He has done. I want to welcome you watching via live stream. We are so happy that you have decided to join us this morning. A big hello to my Fresno Asian and Community Church. You know how much I love you all. May God bless us. As we worship Him in spirit and in truth, we made it to another year. Amen? God has truly, truly been good to each and every one of us. We're going to go straight into the Word of God this morning. Grab a Bible, all those watching, and grab your Bibles. We believe in studying the Bible here. Isn't that right? I love it. Grab your Bible and take notes if you choose. As we examine the topic this morning, responding to failed expectations in 2021. Responding to failed expectations in 2021. God has been good. We're going to pray at this moment. I'm going to ask you watching live stream, as my custom always is. I'm going to give you a few moments. You're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to speak to you directly. And you're going to pray for me, and we're asking God to give us a love for righteousness and a hatred for sin, because sin is the only problem we have on this earth. We desperately need Jesus. So we're praying for the Holy Spirit this morning. Let us kneel together. Father in heaven, we pray that you will speak through the word. Bless those watching via live stream. May the Holy Spirit lead and guide our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Happy New Year. <laughs> Isn't that right? This is how we entered the year 2020. That is not a mistake. We entered the year 2020 with a countdown. Maybe some of you were watching the ball drop in Times Square as the, the, the clock was winding down. And you know, us Adventists, we don't drink champagne, so maybe you had your Martinelli's in hand and uh, making toast and here, here to the new year 2020. And maybe you had a party hat on, maybe you had a party blower, and there was great expectation for the year 2020. And many people were saying that this uh, 2020 was indeed the year of vision, of course, after 2020 vision. And many people had great hopes and big dreams until three months in. Let's look at what transpired in the early months of last year. What happens when expectations fail us? That's our topic this morning. We saw in 2020, January 9, the World Health Organization announces mysterious coronavirus-related pneumonia in Wuhan, China. We see January 21st, the CDC confirms first United States COVID virus case. February 2nd, global air travel is restricted. March 6th, 21 passengers on California cruise ship test positive for COVID-19. You remember that? Uh, that? That ship was stranded in the ocean for a while because people had the virus. And then we have March 13, Trump declares COVID-19 a national emergency. And finally, in March 19th, California issues a statewide stay-at-home order. We had great expectations, great dreams, big hopes, and desires until three months in. And now I've heard people saying, well, praise God that 2020 is behind us 
and the best is yet to come, 2021 is going to be much better uh, than 2020. We need to pause with that thinking. You don't know that. I do not know that. What if 2021, what if this year proves to be worse than last year? Because as uh, students of Bible prophecy, we do know that things will not get better. They will get worse. And so if we are expecting great things to transpire in 2021, that's good. We want to be optimistic. You know, I don't want to be a pessimist. Uh, That's good. Nothing wrong with expecting big things. But what if big things do not take place this year? What if my expectations fail? How do we respond? So the question we will study this morning is, How do we respond and what do we need when expectations fail? And for our discussion this morning, I want to study John the Baptist. Okay, we we will look at John the Baptist. And let's get some context before we get into the Bible. Here we have on the screen a a picture, of course, of uh, this girl, scholars call, name her Salome. And uh, she is dancing. She is dancing, and what happens is uh, she's dancing before Herod and his invited guest. What happened, the, the context tells us the story. John the Baptist, he was a bold preacher, a preacher of righteousness. The Bible says he came in the power and the spirit of Elijah, and Elijah was brave. Elijah just showed up in Ahab's palace unannounced. And so John the Baptist had boldness like Elijah. And he preaches and he told uh, Herod, it is not right for you to have your brother's wife. This is adultery. Now, of course, Herodias, uh, the wife, did not like that. And so John the Baptist, he is then placed in prison. And one day, one night, as Salome is dancing and she's winding her hips like a serpent. And all of these guests, they are just so captivated by her serpent-like moves and her hips are swaying very attractive. Herod says to this girl, hey, I will give you whatever you desire up to half of my kingdom. The daughter of Herodias, she runs back to her mother and she says, mom, I I have this request and I can have whatever I want. Herod told me he'll give me whatever I desire up to half of the kingdom. And the mother says to Herodias, the daughter, I want you to ask, not for millions, not for a large estate. I want you to ask Herod specifically for John the Baptist's head on a platter. She goes back, no longer dancing. She says to Herod, I want John's head cut off. They sever the head of John and they bring this platter and his head is there. What a way to go out. What a way to die. The cousin of Jesus to have your head severed? I am almost positive John did not expect that for his life of preaching righteousness, but that was the end result. Persecution. So that is the context, but before his head was severed, we want to look at what transpired while he was locked up behind bars. How do we respond when our expectations fail us? Let's turn our Bibles now. Everyone watching live stream, grab the word of God because the Bible changes people. Luke, let's turn to the gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 7. The word of God changes. I love it. Luke chapter 7. In Luke chapter 7, as you're turning there, the context, uh, Jesus, he just healed a centurion's servant just by merely speaking the word. Jesus has so much power, he does not have to be present. All he has to do is open his mouth, loose his tongue, and someone can be healed. The next story that takes place in Luke chapter 7 is uh, there's a great funeral procession. This woman with a great crowd, they're on their way to bury her only son. And Jesus shows up as the uh, procession is leaving the city of Nain. Jesus shows up and he literally resurrects the dead boy, and gives the child back to his mother. Okay, so that's the context. Now let's pick up um, the reading in verse 
15. Let's go to verse 15. Luke 7, verse 15. This is absolutely phenomenal. Luke 7, verse 15. The Bible says, And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet, listen to this, is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. Pause. This is absolutely phenomenal. Here we have this great story. He is resurrected. Do you know how powerful that is? Uh, he has resurrected a dead person in the coffin. And the Bible says there's this great celebration. People are glorifying God. How would you respond, you as parents watching this live stream, if you had a dead child and Jesus resurrected that child before your eyes? How would you respond? You would respond with great celebration. You would respond. You would be more uh, happy. You would be happier than how we rang in the new year. You would be jumping up and down, leaping, maybe doing jumping jacks, hugging your child because your child who was once dead is now alive and in your arms. So there's this great celebration that is going around throughout Judea. And these rumors are going about that Jesus, he is healing the sick. He is raising the dead. And everybody's celebrating Jesus except one person behind bars. This man is not celebrating John the Baptist. John the Baptist is not clapping his hands and doing backflips and giving high fives. No, John is behind bars and he has a question for Jesus, his cousin, who has not showed up. And listen to what John says as he's in prison. The Bible says in verse 18, go to verse 18. And the disciples of John showed him uh, of all these things. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art now listen to the question. Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. This is awesome. John sends two of his disciples to meet Jesus, his cousin who has not come to release him. Jesus, the cousin who has not sent him one text message, not one Zoom meeting, nothing. The flesh and blood, Jesus, they have the same blood, they're cousins, and Jesus has not showed up, so John asked a very legitimate question. Are you the one to come? The same John who baptized Jesus. He's asking a question now. I'm behind bars. He is supposed to be my cousin. He has not come to release me, but he's healing pagans. He's healing Romans who do not even believe in the God that I serve and preach. Are you the one to come? Are you, in other words, John is asking. He sends his two disciples to Jesus asking the question, Are you the coming Messiah? Or... Are we looking for someone else? You know why John is asking these questions? One reason. His expectations failed. Man, I'm just preaching the gospel. I just told Herod the truth, and now I'm locked behind bars, and my cousin has not come once to visit me. Are you the Messiah? Have you been there before, brothers and sisters? Going through a rough time? Your own prison cell. And here we have John the Baptist because we must understand and realize both secular people, people in the world, and people in the church, we both go through problems. The difference is people in the church, we handle our problems differently than people in the world. People in the world, the way they handle their problems, they'll go to the bar some of you watching this live stream, maybe some of you in the sanctuary, maybe you can relate to some of these things you will see on the screen. Some people, they get stressed, they go to the bar, and they say, hey, bartender, give me a martini on the rocks. 
or a Coors Light or a Bud Light. So people in the world, what they do, they drink their problems away. I'll just drink my problems away. I'm stressed out. Or maybe alcohol is not your thing. Some people in the world, what they would do, they would take a Marlboro Light or a Switzer Sweet. You know what a Switzer Sweet is? <laughs> or a Black and Mild. And they'll roll it up and they'll light it up and they'll puff that cancer stick. And they'll puff it. Some of you in here used to be smokers. And before you came to Jesus, amen. Come on, Brother Mike, amen. And you'll puff that cancer stick and you'll think, ah, oh, this is calming me down. This nicotine is calming me down. This is what people in the world, this is what they do. This is what they resort to to calm their nerves because they're stressed out. John is behind bars and he is stressed out and he asks Jesus a question, are you the Messiah? Now, Jesus knows because Jesus is God. Jesus knows that he cannot give John a drink because Jesus does not function that way. Jesus knows that he cannot send John a pack of Switzer sweets or Marlboro light. Jesus cannot do that for John to calm down. So Jesus, he's, he's just left with one thing to do, and I love it. I love what Jesus does and how he functions. Listen to what Jesus gives John when John is stressed out and when his expectations failed him. The Bible says in verse 22, watch the text. Then Jesus answering said unto them, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. Now listen very closely. Here it is. How that the, what's that B word? Blind see. And the, what's that L word? Lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the, what's that D word? The deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor, the gospel is preached. Pause. Here we have Jesus. He mentions a number of miracles, okay? But I just want to focus on three. He specifically mentions the blind see. The deaf, they hear. And the lame, they walk. Again, these three. The blind, the deaf, and the lame, they walk. He, I want to highlight those three. Because what Jesus does, Jesus gives the disciples of John not a can of Bud Light. He gives the disciples of John the word of God. How do we know? Come on, y'all. How do we know it's the word of God? Because in Isaiah chapter 35, the Bible says, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in a heart. Do you know what's going on here? In Isaiah chapter 35, you know, my Bible, when you turn to Isaiah 35, it has two stars, one star on verse 5 and one star in verse 6. The stars in my Bible are there because in the Old Testament, any scripture or text that has a star beside it means that it is a messianic text. It is a scripture pointing to the coming Messiah in the Old Testament. So what Jesus does, Jesus is so phenomenal. Jesus says, you know what? The best thing, the best message, I love it, that I can tweet to John is the word of God. And this is so powerful. After John receives the word of God, he never questions once. The word was enough. He never questioned again, is he the Messiah? After John heard that, it clicked in his mind. Because John knew the word of God. That's Isaiah 35. Yes, he is the Messiah. Yes, you are the one to come. This is absolutely powerful, and I love it. So we're going to apply these points this morning. We have four points, and we'll be done. Point number one, when you are going through a hard time, when I am going through a hard time, and I am in my personal prison cell, and it's rough, and it's tough, I need to open the word of God and claim the Bible promises. If you're going through a tough time, for example, in your health, you have a spot on your lung. The diagnosis is stage four, and it's inoperable. When there is some type of sickness, you have to run. I have to run to the Bible and claim the promises pertaining to my sickness. 
If I have a problem in my marriage and the marriage is on the rocks and we're talking about divorce, I have to run to the Bible and claim the word of God, the promises. Because if you, if you are expecting something in 2021 and you do not receive it, you have to run to the Bible. The Bible is what Jesus gave John. Let's go to our next point. We're still in Luke chapter 7. I love it. Luke chapter 7. Let's go to uh, verse 28. Let's go to verse 28. Jesus, when you continue reading the previous verses, he's talking about John. He's commenting about John. Verse 28 says, For I say unto you, now listen to Jesus, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Pause. Jesus is so phenomenal. Here we have John. John is locked up in prison, and he is down, and he is depressed, and he is discouraged, not realizing that Jesus is on the outside praising him. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Jesus, he is doubting, he is questioning, and Jesus is bragging about him. Jesus is talking about John. Now, we need to think about this. Jesus is talking about John when his expectations failed, in 2021, Jesus, he wants to talk about you. Come on, bro. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Jesus wants to talk about us, not in a bad way, but in a good way. The question then has to be asked, how does Jesus talk about you? Well, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come as bad. You can be the, the worst of the worst. He can save you. The uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for him, for them. Intercession is someone pleading on your behalf. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, when we come to him, he intercedes to the Father on our behalf. Let's get a, let, let's get a little personal. Let's look at what Ellen White says. Quote, in Christ's name, our petitions ascend to the Father. He intercedes in our behalf. Christ is the connection link between God and man. He has, listen to this. Let me slow down. This is just too good. He has promised his personal intercession. Do you know how powerful this is? When we come in the name of Jesus Christ, he intercedes for us, but it's not general. Jesus is not before the Father saying, you know, help this person, help that person. No, Jesus is before his Father saying, help Alvin. Help Mike. Help Connor. Help Tiffany, Tina, uh, Robbie, Bobby. Help these people, dear God. And Jesus makes it personal as he intercedes for every single one of us watching this live stream. Jesus wants to talk about you. And he wants to talk about me as he spoke about John. So here we have point number two on the screen. When you are going through a hard time, when our expectations fail us in 2021, we must find ourselves praying in the name of Jesus. Now, we do know that John was a praying man. The Bible tells us in Luke 11, verse 1, the disciples of Jesus came to him and said, Hey, Lord Jesus, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples how to pray. So John believed in prayer. So I know that John was in that prison cell seeking God's face, praying, praying, praying for strength as he is struggling. We got to pray in the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters. And with that prayer, we're just not praying in the name of Jesus and then say, asking for things. And then we say, in Jesus' name, amen. Because we can ask for material things, and material things are good. I came here in a car. A car is a material possession. And I thank God for my car. Nothing wrong with that. But what we need to be asking more than material things is the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I tell you all the time, Jesus received the fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost every single day of his life. And we need to receive the Holy Spirit every single day. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is being withdrawn from this planet. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost is about to take off, and we know that John had a Holy Ghost. The Bible says he, John, shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. This brother had a Holy Ghost power in him before his mother pushed him out. 
Now, there's a problem here, seemingly. You know what the problem is? Because Luke chapter 11 tells us that we are supposed to ask for the Holy Spirit and then we will receive it. John is in the womb of his mother. He's never asking for any Holy Ghost, but he had it because his mama prayed for him. There is something about a mother's prayer that is so powerful. A mother's prayer, mothers love their children because they bear them in the womb. There's a connection a mother has, a father does not have. And you women watching this live stream, if you are planning to have a child, if you do not have a child, or if you have a child right now, that child in the first trimester, second trimester, third trimester can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Your child can be filled with power in the womb. Why? Because God is no respecter of persons. And if God did it for John, he can do it for you. Come on, y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to stay calm. <laughs> this stuff is so powerful. We need, when we pray in the name of Jesus, we need to be asking for Holy Ghost power. Why? Because this nation is in trouble. The nation is in chaos. We saw what happened. This happened January 6th. U.S. Capitol secured four dead after rioters stormed the halls of Congress to block Biden's win. Brothers and sisters, we saw this play out live stream less than one week in. Less than one week in the brand new year, we are in trouble. And you think this year is going to get better? You think this year is going to be better than last? Let's not fool ourselves. Now, brothers and sisters, it can be only by divine intervention. Only by divine intervention can this year be better than last year. Brothers and sisters, we don't even know what's going to happen next. You have somebody has their foot up in Nancy Pelosi's office. How does, that, how does this even happen? This church is more secure than the Capitol. No one ever put their foot in my, my office. You can't get in there. The alarm will go off. <laughs> But in the Capitol building, you can go in the Capitol building, put your foot on the house, the speaker of the house desk. And the world is laughing at America. And as I see these things coming, um, taking place this week, I said it makes so much sense why this nation is going to be the one to enact the Sunday law. This nation is already going down. Brothers and sisters, what is, what's going to happen Inauguration Day? They're talking, Dad, but if that, if security is not ramped up on Inauguration Day, <laughs> look at this stuff. All the commentators are saying, never seen it like this before, never seen it like this before. And a lot of people are saying, especially in Christianity and Adventism, Jesus is about to come. Jesus is about to come. Yes, he's about to come, but before he comes, Sunday law comes. Before he comes, persecution comes. Before he comes, the latter rain is poured out, and the latter rain is only poured out on those who receive the early rain. So you and I have to make sure we have a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost every single day, because without the fresh baptism, no latter rain. And we're so focused on Jesus coming. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Because if you're focused on Jesus coming, you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're going to be lost anyway. We need Holy Ghost power. This nation is going downhill. We're functioning like a third world nation. Man, we need help. Jesus coming, Jesus coming. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The issue in 2021 is not, are you a Democrat or a Republican? That's not the issue. The issue in 2021 is not black against white. There is only one issue in 2021, and that issue is you either have the Holy Ghost or you don't. That's the only issue. Because people who have the Holy Ghost, they don't storm the Capitol building. The Holy Ghost does not prom promote breaking and entering. No, it doesn't do that. That's satanic. And in these last days, we either have the Holy Ghost or we don't. Why? Because again, the Holy Ghost is leaving this planet. And the Holy Ghost, when he takes off, it's only going to be with those who have him. Hmm. We worried about Democrat, Republican. None of that stuff is going to save you, brothers and sisters. And so many Adventists are so into politics. What? You think Joe Biden is going to help you? Somebody just clicked me off. 
Joe Biden and Harris will never help you. Only the Holy Spirit can. We need Holy Ghost power in these last days. John had it. Hmm. Just ask. That's all you have to do is just ask and you shall receive. Let's end here. My Bible's closed. It doesn't take long to preach a sermon. My Bible's closed because the Holy Spirit is convicting somebody right now. The Holy Spirit is convicting someone watching this broadcast right now of that sin he or she needs to give up. And as we close, I want us to be thinking, what was it like when John literally is in handcuffs? He's in handcuffs. He's behind prison door, surrounded by prison walls in a dungeon with rats. I'm sure he didn't have a bathroom, so it smells like urine, urine and feces. Disgusting. And what was it like in, in those handcuffs? And that night, at the Salome dance, like a serpent, and she requested, the mother requested for the head of John. Or was it like when that prison guard came with the keys to the cell? The prison guard went to the door, opened it, and he says to John, John, tonight your head has been requested. And he grabs John by those handcuffs. And they walk down that long hallway. And as John enters the executioner's room, he sees that large sword and he knows it's for his head. What was going through the mind of John? I mean, think about it. How would you respond knowing someone brings you in a room, you see a long sword, and your head is coming off? and Jesus never visited you. You know what some of us would do? Some would say, well, God is not real. He allowed me to go through this. I'm about to get it. My head severed. There's no God. No, no, no. John held on to his faith. Even though he knew his head was coming off, he held on. How is this even possible? Ellen White tells us. Jesus did not interpose to deliver his servant. Watch this. He knew that John would bear the test. Bro, if I was Pentecostal, I'll be running all over this church. You know, Adventists, you got to stay calm. But at, when I'm studying the Bible at home, I'm Pentecostal. This stuff is exciting, y'all. But she tells us. This man is in prison, locked up. Jesus knows his head is coming off. Their literal cousins does not visit him, does not send a letter, does not send a tweet, does not send a, a text. And he knows that John is asking a legitimate question, are you the one to come? And Jesus does not perform a miracle for John because Jesus knows he can handle it. You know how powerful this is? You watching this live stream? I do not know what you are facing in life. Whatever you are facing through the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus knows that you can bear the test. You can bear the test. You're stressed out about employment. Jesus knows you can handle it. You're stressed out about your children coming back to God. They grew up in Adventism. Jesus knows that you can handle it. How? Again, these steps. Number one, you got to claim the promises of God when your expectations are not met. Number two, we have to pray in the name of Jesus because power is there. Number three, we have to ask for the Holy Spirit every single day because that empowers us. And number four, after doing steps one, two, and three, you will have the power, I will have the power to bear any test. Bear any test. But you can't skip steps. You know how powerful this is? Watch how powerful this is. Point number one, claim the promises of the Bible. There was someone in the Bible who claimed Bible promises. Number two, pray in Jesus' name. There was someone in the Bible who prayed constantly. Number three, ask daily for the Holy Spirit. There was a man in the Bible who was baptized with the Holy Spirit every single day. And as, re as a result of this man doing one, two, and three, he had the power to bear the test. That man is Jesus. 
And the greatest test that he bore was in that garden. That was the test. Jesus was able to bear that test, your sins and my sins being placed upon him in one moment of time. He was able to bear that test one reason. He had the word of God in him. He had a prayer life. He had the Holy Spirit every single day. And as a result, he bore the test in, in Gethsemane. And therefore, since bearing that test in Gethsemane, he went to the cross. Hmm. Jesus Christ I love it. In Gethsemane, he asked the Father, is it possible? Remove this cup. Is there any way else? Is there another way out? Is there any way that God can be glorified and humanity saved? Lord, is there any way remove this cup? But then he said, nevertheless, I love it. He says to his father, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. The test was so great for Jesus in that garden. Is there another way out? Three times. That's how great the test was. But because Jesus had so much Holy Ghost in him. Mm. Jesus had so much Holy Ghost in him. After that third prayer to the Father, he got up with his disciples, got arrested, went to Calvary, and resurrected. And now Jesus is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And he is interceding for all those who come in his name. Why? Because he wants you saved. Jesus Christ is in the business of saving bad people. He wants messed up people saved. And when messed up people are converted, by God's grace, they can be a part of the 144,000. I'm planning. I want to be a part of that number. The way things are looking, we just may be the final generation. Sunday law, latter rain poured out, persecution. I don't know. One day, you might be my cellmate. I don't know. The way things are going, brothers and sisters, if we do not have the Holy Ghost, we will never make it. My first appeal is people are going through rough times. Brothers and sisters, this COVID thing, this thing is real. What are you going through? Are you sick? I was uh, talking to someone the other day. I spoke to this person. Someone with COVID-19, I spoke to them on the phone twice. Really tough, really sad situation. They were in the ICU and I'm speaking to them. They could barely speak. A few days later, she died. And now I'm going to be a part of the funeral in a few days. The family's having a hard time. Look, you might be watching. And you know who I'm talking to. Sis, if you're watching, do not give up on Jesus. You have come too far. I know your mother died, and it's rough. We've prayed together. And if you are watching this live stream, do not give up on Jesus. I know people who have been healed. I was talking to another man just a few days ago. He was this close to dying, very close to dying, but God intervened and he left the hospital. I was talking to him a couple of days after he left the hospital. He was on the phone crying, telling me his testimony because he should have been dead. He's crying on the phone, praising God for what God did for him. Brothers and sisters, God can heal instantly. But God also allows people to go to sleep. And God allows people to sleep because in his knowledge, in his omniscience, God sees what we cannot see. God sees 
that my mother had to die of cancer a few years ago because maybe she could not make it during this time. So God, I prayed for my mother. We all prayed for her to be uh, healed from cancer, but she died. Am I going to give up on Jesus? No way. Because God has been too good for me. Too good to me. And brothers and sisters, whatever you are facing in life, if someone dies, you cannot turn back on Christ. You can't do it. Why? Because he's been too good. If Jesus never does a good thing for me for the rest of my life, he's done enough. He has done enough for me. He's real. And my appeal to you watching this live stream, if you have already experienced failed expectations only nine days in, run to Jesus. Ask for the Holy Spirit because God knows that you can bear the test through that power. First appeal, you're watching this and you're going through a hard time and no one knows about it. No one knows about your personal prison cell and you're going through times and maybe you're questioning God. Are you real? Are you still with me? Have I committed the unpardonable sin? Why don't you hear my prayers? God hears. He hears. And he's speaking to you right now through the power of the Holy Spirit. My first appeal is if you are having a hard time, do not give up on Jesus. Because he's with you. As he was with John. My second appeal for the person watching this live stream or in the building, you are holding on to a certain sin in your life. It's an addiction. It's not a struggle. It is a sin that you like or a sin that I like. Whatever that sin may be, the Holy Spirit is chasing. He is pricking the heart to give it up. Because the latter rain is not going to fall on someone holding on to sin. It will never happen. But there is hope because you're alive. My third appeal. Mm. You're watching this broadcast. And you are holding unto unforgiveness. I make this appeal all the time. You know why? Because it is amazing how many people in the church hate each other, but we're all going to heaven together. You are watching this live stream or in the building and you are holding onto unforgiveness. You can't stand your ex-spouse. You can't stand your boss for what they did to you. You cannot stand the man who, who molested you. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, you can forgive that person. You can forgive them. So if you're watching this live stream and you're holding on to unforgiveness, that's the third appeal and the Holy Ghost is coming after you to give you power to sever it. Because the Bible teaches God cannot forgive us if we cannot forgive others. Can't happen. Jesus never lied. Jesus says that. Last appeal, if you need to be baptized or if you've backslidden, you can come back to Jesus right now. Hallelujah, there's hope. If you have backslidden or strayed, come to Jesus right now and he will accept you every single time with open arms, every time. And he will give you the power of the Holy Ghost to walk a straight and narrow path. We're going to pray. I'm going to kneel. You can kneel if you choose. I'm going to kneel. And you tell God exactly what's on your heart. And God is going to meet you where you are. I love it because brothers and sisters, you know, I love it so much because in 2021, Jesus is not trying to change your year. He's trying to change you. He's trying to change me. And the fact that you are alive, the fact that I'm alive means that God still has work for you to do. There is a purpose. You are not dead. You are alive. John died because his mission was complete. His mission was done. So he's resting. You're still alive. God has a purpose for you. And we're going to pray and we're going to seek God, believing that he will hear and he will answer according to his will. I love it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we're praying live stream, I want to pray for the first appeal for the person watching this who is struggling with their faith, questioning God. 
God, I'm having a rough time. Are you the one to come? I'm not even sure you hear my prayers any longer. God, please. I know the Holy Ghost is touching hearts in this moment because the Holy Ghost is moving. I pray that you'll be with that person that they will never give up. They have come too far. I pray for the second appeal. I pray for the person watching this or in the sanctuaries holding on to a sin. Lord, through the power of the Holy Ghost, we have to sever sin because if we hold on to sin, if Alvin Mirage hold, holds on to sin, I will never receive the latter rain. It can't happen. I pray for the third appeal for the person watching this live stream who is, who is holding on to unforgiveness. They just will not let go of that grudge. God, we cannot function like this as Christians. I pray that um, you'll give them the Holy Ghost to sever that unforgiving spirit. I pray for the fourth appeal for the person who needs to be baptized or rebaptized, or the person who has backslidden, strayed from the beautiful Jesus. That person can come back to Christ right now. And you will accept them with open arms. Why? Because you, you save bad people. You love bad people. Lord, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And when our expectations of you fail, may we run to the Bible. May we pray in the name of Jesus. May we ask for the Holy Spirit. Because with that strength, we can bear any test we face in 2021. Well, I just want to thank you for not leaving me alone behind this pulpit. And when you come to receive your children as your own, I pray that everyone watching this live stream will be part of the first resurrection or caught up in the air to meet you. I pray that you will continue to work on the hearts of our children and our loved ones who have strayed from you. Oh God, please bring them back. I pray for this nation. I pray for President Trump. I pray for Biden and Harris because we're supposed to lift up our leaders. You, you set up kings. The Bible tells us that in Daniel. You set them up and you bring them down. So, Lord, we pray for our leaders, oh, God, and this nation. It is crystal clear to me that this nation is in trouble and it's in chaos. But what is also clear is that God is still alive. God is still on the throne and he's changing hearts. Continue to bless everyone watching this live stream. May we have a wonderful week with Jesus until we meet again. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every child of the King say, Amen. God bless you all watching this live stream. We love you from Fresno Asian Community Church. Join us next week as we study the Word of God. God bless you all, and please remember, you got to keep on holding on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus no matter what, and you're going to make it. You're going to make it. God bless you. Have a great week. Maranatha.